introduction to our section on the elasticity uh, concept. In particular, we start with the price elasticity of demand. It's the big one. Once we understand that, the others are uh, relatively easy to follow. The price elasticity of demand. My symbol for that up here is the E with a subscript D on it. Price elasticity of demand. Conceptually, what we're talking about is how much importance does the price play in the buyer's decision to buy? In other words, is price really important or it really doesn't matter, I'm going to buy it anyway? If price is really important in the buying decision, it could be that a small increase in the price and the buyer says, never mind, I don't want it. Or a small decrease in the price, the buyer might say, hey, that's great, I'd like a lot more. In that case, price is pretty important. Alternatively, there are times when the price is not terribly relevant, at least within a range, when we might say, I don't care what it costs, I need it, I need it now. Now what we're talking about is the elasticity or price elasticity of demand. Think about this, if gasoline escalates up by 10 or 15 cents a gallon, does that change people's driving habits? Typically, no. The price isn't terribly relevant to their decision on how much to buy. That sort of demand, where the price doesn't play a big role, we call an inelastic demand. When we say your demand for a product is inelastic, we mean you're willing to pay considerably more for it just to keep buying about as much as you have been. So in an inelastic demand, if you want to think of it this way, you really need it. Okay. An elastic demand, on the other hand, means that a, a, even a rather small increase in the price would cause you to buy something else or not buy that product. So let's take a look. What makes the demand for a product or a service become more elastic or more inelastic? Just conceptually. And there are four factors we want to discuss. The first one, is the product or service a necessity or is it a luxury? Something you don't really need to have. If it's a necessity, how important is the price? If you need it, you need it bad. If you're out of gas, you need gasoline. If you're dying of thirst, and you need water. If you're a diabetic, and you need insulin. Those are necessities. We know that when the demand for a product uh, is, a, is a necessity, then we know the demand is going to be fairly inelastic. Let's look at what that means. That means on the demand curve, that even though the price may change quite a bit, the quantity people purchase changes very little. The price is not terribly important when you have a necessity at issue. On the other hand, if you're selling luxuries or products that people don't terribly have to have, it may be that a relatively small drop in price encourages them to buy a lot more, or a relatively small increase in price discourages them, causes them to buy considerably less. In that case, the demand curve is going to be relatively flat. More to the shape of the demand curves in a minute. So, necessities have any elastic demand. Uh, luxuries have a more elastic demand. What else? If there are very few substitutes for the product, how many substitutes do you know for insulin? Or for gasoline when you're out of gas? If there are very few substitutes for the product, the demand tends to be very inelastic. On the other hand, if there are a lot of substitutes, then the price of that product goes up, we buy something else, easily substitutable. Okay? If the price of Colgate toothpaste goes up, we buy Crest or whatever. All right? Plenty of substitutes for a particular brand name especially. Think about this one. Suppose the price of Miller beer went up. What would happen to the sales of Miller beer? Well, people would look around and say, well, I can buy a lot of other bi different beers out there. So a small increase in the price of Miller beer might cause people to, to, to abandon it and go buy another brand of beer immediately. Okay? Finally, or third, if there is very little time for you to make your purchase, very little time to shop around, to compare, if you need it and you need it right now, your demand tends to be more inelastic. That's how convenience stores make their living. People would rather run inside, buy something quick, and run back out than go in and, and take their time going through a grocery store. So you can literally find a grocery store and a convenience store, both of them selling beer. And the convenience store selling at a much higher price, 
because people are willing to pay the greater price because they're in a hurry, because they want the convenience of in and out real quick. If you have plenty of time to shop, your demand tends to be more elastic. The price becomes a bigger consideration. If your car breaks down, you need a car right now. Your demand gets to be inelastic. If you're planning in the future and you're saying, I'm not going to buy a car until about six months from now, I've got plenty of time to look around, then you're much more sensitive to what prices are. Make sense? And then finally, if the product or service you're getting ready to buy costs you a large part of your budget, a large percentage of your income, your demand tends to be pretty inelastic. That would mean that if, when you're buying a car, if the price goes up 10%, that's quite a bit of money because that's a lot of your budget. But if you're out there buying something small, like a box of toothpicks or a box of salt, an increase in the price of that, because it costs very little anyway, a 10% increase in the price, doesn't make much of a difference in your budget. It accounts for a small part of your budget, and so your demand tends to be inelastic for things that are a small part of your expenditures and much more elastic for products that account for a large percent of your budget. If you want to keep these factors in mind, there's a few lessons to be learned in there. If, for example, you're going out to a job interview, do you want the demand for you and your services to be inelastic or elastic? If it's inelastic, it means you hopefully will command a greater price. So, for example, can you prove to me when you come to my company to interview for a job, are you truly a necessity? Is there something about you I need to have? Are there very few substitutes for you? Are you unique in your skills, your talents, your experiences, your motivation, etc.? Do I need to hire somebody in a hurry? And are you going to account for only a small part of my total payroll? In those cases, you've got a better chance of starting off at a better salary. So this is another way to look at how bad do people want it or how bad do they want you. Okay, that's the introduction to the price elasticity of demand. Next, we're going to get into some of the uh, calculations and uh, visualizations. Thanks.